Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, we are doing a just arrived at Sephora. So if you want to know what's good and what's not so good that is on the just arrived page at Sephora, then just keep watching. Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And that is why these videos are one of my favorites. Like I said, I go on to the just arrived makeup page on Sephora. I pick out all of the products that I've had or that I've tested and then I share them with you guys. My final condensed thoughts because a lot of these products I actually do have previous reviews on on my channel. But now I really get to come back and update you and tell you if it's worth it or not. I have been neglecting these kinds of videos though and I'm very very sorry but with all the new brands that have come out I have a lot of stuff almost 40 products so we're gonna get straight into it. We're gonna organize today's video by brand and we're gonna start off with the brand Rare Beauty. Now this is probably the stuff that I've had the most experience with. I just have been continually testing the products out really getting a feel for it so I feel like I definitely have a lot of thoughts and experience with her products now. So we'll start off with the face primer. This is the illuminating base primer and I really like this primer. I got it in a small size but this is actually one of my favorite products that I've tried from the brand. I think it's just a really great illuminating primer. It reminds me a lot of the Tom Ford illuminating primer. I actually think I might like this a little bit better. I think it's a little bit more moisturizing and also the Tom Ford's not glittery but it has more sparkles in it than this does and I just think it's a really great illuminating primer. You can really see the mirror effect that it puts on your face and I really like it as a base for makeup just to have a little bit of glow pop through. So I definitely think that the illuminating primer is a hit from this brand. Moving on to the foundation from Rare Beauty. I have mine in the shade 210 and I really like this foundation. This is the foundation I'm wearing today. And by the way, in my shots of me putting on makeup, if you see me talking, I was on the phone with my immigration lawyer for Jose trying to get our paperwork figured out. But anyways, I like this foundation. I don't think it's my favorite foundation in my collection by any means. I do think it feels weightless on the skin. It gives a very nice demi matte finish on my skin. It wears pretty well, but most importantly, I just like how easy it is to apply with the doe foot, how easy and quickly it spreads out, and I think it looks pretty decent and wears pretty well also. So I think it's a solid foundation. I've been enjoying it. It's one of those foundations where I'm definitely gonna run through this foundation, but I don't necessarily love it enough to purchase it time and time again, but the time that I do have with it, I do really enjoy it. Kind of on the contrary though, I do have to say I'm not a big fan of the concealer from Rare Beauty. I find it to be very drying and very creasy under my eyes. I think it's a little bit more dry because you're really supposed to wear these products without powder, but I just think this looks really not very good on my under eyes and I'm just not impressed with that at all. So this is not a hit in my opinion and I think it's a pass if I'm being honest. Uh, I do also have the Brow Harmony which is the eyebrow pencil in the line. I have mine in the shade Cool Brown. I also do not recommend recommend this eyebrow pencil. I just think eyebrow pencils are such a personal thing and this does not fit the type of eyebrow filling in that I prefer. So the pencil side, it's quite thick. I feel like I prefer a bit of a thinner pencil and it deposits too much color. So the color itself is a little bit too deep for me. And the fact that it's just so thick and so dark, it's not the type of brows that I like. I like a little bit of a lighter pencil that's a little bit more waxy. This one is just too creamy, too pigmented. It does blend out very nicely, but it doesn't give me the precision that I want for my brow application. However, there is a gel side to it over here with a very nice thin spoolie. I really do like this brow gel and I wish they sold the brow gel separately because I really do not like the pencil side but the brow gel it deposits a great amount of color for a brow gel and it still kind of fills them in and it definitely sets them down. I'm not going to say to purchase this item just for the brow gel because that's not worth it but if they sold the brow gel separately I would definitely continue purchasing the brow gel but as a whole I personally do not recommend this product. It depends what type of brow girl you are but for me I don't like it. I also picked up a couple of the blushes, which I really do enjoy. The lighter one is Bliss, and Bliss is actually the one that I'm wearing on my cheeks right now, and then I also picked up the shade Joy. I think these are very nice. Bliss has more of a matte finish, and Joy has more of a shiny finish. I do think I prefer the formula in Joy, which is a little bit more dewy on the skin, but I think both of these are very nice products. They blend out pretty easily, and while I will say this isn't my favorite product in the world, 
world. I just don't find myself grabbing for liquid blushes that often. I prefer like a cream blush as opposed to a liquid. I think these are a nice formula. They look really good and I do think they are one of the better items in the Rare Beauty line. The last item that I picked up for complexion from Rare Beauty was the Liquid Luminizer. I got mine in the shade Mesmerize and I personally do not like this liquid illuminator. It just didn't work out for me. When I swatched it, I thought it was very promising. I thought it was gorgeous, but I felt like when I put it on my skin, it honestly just disappeared. It didn't move my foundation, which is my number one pet peeve about liquid illuminators, but I thought I was going to get this really gorgeous pink metallic shift on my skin and I just didn't get that. It literally disappeared. I had to keep building it up and it wouldn't build up the actual highlight. So for me, I just personally don't find this to be worth it. I'm not a big fan of liquid luminizers in general anyways, and this formula didn't impress me at all. I swear, it like disappears on my skin. Am I the only one that thinks that? I picked up a couple of the matte lip creams. So I have Bray, which has been one of my absolute favorite fall colors. I've been wearing it nonstop. And then I also have the color Courage, which is the base color to what I'm wearing right now. I really do like these products. I think they're going to give you more of a blotted lip kind of look. You're not going to get full opacity like you would with a regular liquid lipstick, but I think these are very nice. They're very comfortable. I think they're appropriate for wearing with a mask. So I do like that they are matte and they're not overly drying. So I do recommend these. I think these are definitely a hit on the just arrived page and they get my stamp of approval. I've been grabbing for them a lot and I love her range of colors. The last item that we have from Rare Beauty that I've been testing out is the Dewy Lip Balm in Praise and this is very very nice. I do really like this. I don't know that I'd like it enough to pick up more colors and to own multiple colors at once but I find these to be very very comfortable. They're a little bit slippy slidey so you definitely want to have something on your lips underneath I would say but these are very very nice to keep in your purse and there's a lot of products like these in the market right now so I wouldn't say this is necessarily a unique product but it definitely is a very nice formula and I haven't been grabbing for this a ton because I've been grabbing for the matte lip creams over this one but this is still a nice tinted lip balm kind of product. Not my cup of tea. I just don't normally go for products like these, but it is nice. The next big brand to come out is Makeup by Mario, Kim Kardashian's makeup artist. I did just recently post a whole review of his line, so I'm still pretty new to his line. So I'm not as well versed as the Rare Beauty, but I do want to give you my kind of collected thoughts as I've been playing a little bit more. So we will start off with the mixing and medium. This is called the Master Metal Manipulator. And I really do like this product. I think if you have oily lids, this is a great product to look into. Basically, you mix pigments into this or you can just wet your brush with this and it makes the eyeshadow more metallic, just like water would, but it also causes the product to dry down to where it becomes waterproof and doesn't move. So the quality of this is spectacular. It does what it's supposed to do, but based on your guys' comments, I would recommend getting the Mayron one over this one because the Mayron is about four bucks cheaper, but you actually get five times the amount of products. You get way more product. Mayron is the exact same ingredients as this. It's just an overall better value. When I would argue getting the Mario one though would be just because it's much easier to pick up. Mayron you're not going to find at your local Sephora. This one is just more accessible to the consumer and also it does have this droplet kind of packaging whereas the Mayron you have to put it like in a lid. So this one is a little bit easier just to squirt and go but value wise there is a product out there that works the same that has a better value. So that's up to you. So I also use this today. This is the Master Eye Prep and Set. I have mine in the shade light. When I first used this, I really, really liked it. I found that my shadow wore just fine. I didn't have any creasing. I mean, I didn't notice anything exceptional. My eyeshadow wore it as normal and there wasn't too much creasing. Now what I will say, I don't know if my room is cold or maybe that's the issue, but I do feel like the cream products have already started to dry up a little bit. They've stiffened. They're harder to blend out on my eyelid and I don't like the feeling of tugging on my eyelid. That's why I usually use a sponge to blend out concealer or my primer. So for this one, I had to really warm it up with my finger, pat it on, and then try and use my beauty blender to kind of smooth out the product. So this is just from my first time to my second time using it, and I feel like it's already kind of a little bit harder to use. So I don't know what that's all about, but the product itself is nice quality while hoping that this guy does not dry out in the next few uses. And the powder is really nice. It's very nice and light. Since I didn't have a new powder, I actually use this to set my solution. Selena Gomez concealer and it was a nice under eye setting powder as well but I really do overall like this 
product. As long as it doesn't dry out like I think it might be doing, I think this is a very good product. I like having the two different colors to kind of mix up what you're doing to get it to be your skin tone, or sometimes you want a lighter color on your eyelid to make certain colors pop. So I really do like this product. I don't think it is necessary, but it's good. I like it. Also from the line, he did come out with three shadow palettes. So the first one is the Master Mattes. For me, like this is a cool palette, and I think there is space in a lot of people's collection for this palette, but at the same time, I don't think it's something that you need unless you've been eyeballing an all matte kind of neutral toned palette, then this would be good for you or you want this palette to pair with like your glitter shadows or something. I don't find the formula to be exceptional. I think it's a decent formula, but I think it's kind of a middle of the road formula. It does the job. It blends out, it packs on well, so there isn't anything bad I can say about the quality, but it is not a top-notch formula, which I kind of was expecting from him because it's makeup by Mario. It's not top-notch, but it's definitely a nice formula. Um, we also have the Master Metallics. Again, I really like this one. I think this one is my favorite palette in this collection because I love the colors that he chose specifically. The one downside to this is I feel like the colors aren't quite as shimmery as they look when you swatch them or when you look at them in the pan. I do feel like they lose a little bit of that shimmeriness when you apply them to the eye. It's just not as pretty as I was expecting. But overall, the quality of these are really nice. They're very, very creamy. Love the colors. And I think this one is a really fun one. And I do need to continue playing with this and more because this is a newer guy in the house. So I can't really tell you too much experience that I've had with it. But so far, I do like it. Um, and then we have the Master Metals. So this one, I think, is a bit overpriced because it is $48 for only five shades. But it definitely is the most unique concept in his line. This palette specifically is what he uses the Master Metal Manipulator for, but you can use this with any shadow that you want, but these shadows are very chrome to begin with, so they become even more crazy. So I really do like this palette. I like that it has a removable tray, and I think it's really fun. If it's not something that you are absolutely dying for, I would definitely say pass, because at the end of the day, these aren't unique colors. There are palettes like this on the market already, but I would say it's probably the coolest concept with the tray and it's really fun to get the whole set. So this one is exciting. I think it's marketed very well and it's done so in a way that makes it unique, but if you really think about it, it's not that but I still really like it. Um, and then I also got the Master Crystal Reflector in Bronze Eye. Mine came completely shattered. I still need to contact Sephora about that. I do not recommend that product. I think it's overpriced. It's $24. All it is, it's a little bit of glitter with a translucent base. And I'm not $24 for that. Personally, I just, there's just better like glittery products on the market if you ask me. And if it was like $12, I would say, okay, that's pretty because it is pretty to put that little bit of glimmer on the eyes, but I just don't think the price is justified. So for me, not a big fan of that. The last item from the Makeup by Mario collection that I got to try was the Master Matte Liquid Liner. And I have this on right now and I really do like this line. I think it wears very well. It's not a super matte finish but it is not super shiny either. I really like the way that this applies. I like the felt tip. I feel like I have a lot of control. I like how long it is. I think it's very easy and precise. So this is one of my more favorite liquid liners that I've tried recently. So I definitely think that this one is a thumbs up. I do recommend this one. So that covers the Makeup by Mario line. Let's go into some of the Charlotte Tilbury releases that have come out to Sephora. So these are technically a little bit older-ish, but they did just come to Sephora. So we're gonna start off with the Jewel line. So a couple of the Jewel colors have come out. There's been more colors to come out, but I have the Pillow Talk gloss, which is what I'm wearing now. And then I also have Walk of No Shame. Now between the two, I would really only recommend you get the deeper one, Walk of No Shame, because Pillow Talk, I just don't find to be anything so special. It's a gorgeous component, but it's just kind of a normal gloss. I prefer the Pat McGrath formula. I'm not head over heels in love with this particular formula for Charlotte Tilbury. Like I said, I think the Walk of No Shame is a little bit more worth your money. I much prefer this color. I think it actually has a bit more of a jewel finish to the lips, where I feel like this is just a milky nude kind of lip gloss, and I'm not that crazy amount it if I'm being honest. While these are nice, they're very pretty, they would make a great gift as far as knocking my socks off. 
they don't. She's also released on Sephora the Jewel iPod. So I only have one shade, but I know she has the shade Pillow Talk on Sephora, which I'm honestly very much considering purchasing that because I love this formula. So this is a gorgeous glittery eye topper and I think it gives such an ethereal Charlotte Tilbury effect to the eye. It doesn't budge, it doesn't smudge, it doesn't crease at all. This is an amazing formula. She did a great job with this formulation. I do highly recommend these jewel toppers. If you like a more glittery lid without actually having glitter on your eye, this gives this gorgeous glittery sparkle that's so fine, very high quality. Highly recommend this. I really like this one. We also have the Bejeweled Eyes to Hypnotize palette and this is her new holiday collection which is why this has this gorgeous silver packaging and you have four different color stories in here. You have more of a brown color story, more of a warm story, we have a purple story and then kind of a cool brown taupey kind of color story. I really love these palettes from Charlotte Tilbury every year. I find them to be the best value to pick up her formula at and they aren't compromised in quality either. They're phenomenal and this palette is nothing short of that. I will say of all of her releases in the previous years. This one isn't my favorite set of colors, but it is a gorgeous palette and especially if you're interested in Charlotte Tilbury and you like the formula and you like these colors, I do recommend this palette. The colors are creamy, delicious, shimmery, Charlotte, ugh. I do love this, even though it's not my favorite of the 12 pans that she's come out with, it still is a stunning palette. And in my opinion, these 12 pan palettes are worth every penny. Now, when we get towards the quads, those are when I'm like, okay, probably not worth your money, but these are a great value for a great formula and a great set of colors. Very easy to use because they give you guided sections. It's very easy to create looks as well and the formulation won't disappoint you. The next thing Miss Charlotte came out with is the Hollywood Superstar Glow Highlighter. And this has been my current favorite highlighter of the moment. Now it is $55. I don't recommend, you know, if you're tied on money to spend $55 on a highlight. That is absolutely not a necessity. Wet n Wild has great highlighters and they're like $3. <sighs> but I love this highlighter. There's just something about it that's a subtle but blinding glow at the same time. It melts into the skin. It doesn't emphasize texture and it looks good on virtual everybody. Everybody that I've seen reviewed this likes it because it's such a phenomenal formula. It's just incredible to me how it melts into the skin because when I feel it, I feel like it could potentially be like a chunky formula that just does not look flattering on texture. It melts into the skin. So I don't want to talk about this too much because I think $55 for a highlighter is crazy, but it's a crazy good highlight, okay? It is. You guys know how I feel about it. <laughs> All right, let's go over the couple of Natasha Denona releases that were on the Just Arrived page. So these are not as new, but they were still on the Just Arrived page, and I don't know how they do that. I think brands probably pay to stay longer or be featured at the top of the page. But anyways, these were on here. So these are the Chromium Liquid Eyeshadows. There are a few more colors, but I picked out three. I believe there's five colors. I have a full review on these if you want to see them swatched, applied to the eyes, but I really enjoy the formula of these. I love to look at multi chromes. I like to swatch them, but when it comes to wearing them out, I really don't do that. I don't know. Sometimes I can find multi chromes to be a little bit not flattering just when the shift is happening, you know? Sometimes they'll get like the darkest color on the inner part of your eye and the lightest color out here and just technically it's not a flattering look, but they're really, really cool. And I love pairing these with other base shades and I think the quality is awesome. So if you think that you're gonna wear these and you like the colors and you like the idea of the multi-chromes, I do recommend these. My personal favorite, I have to say, is Scarab. This has like a gold, green, blue shift to it. It's stunning. I think it's the most unique of the multi-chromes. So I do recommend this one. I love all of the colors that I got, but Scarab definitely I have the most fun with because if I'm gonna wear multi-chrome, I feel like I might as well go off all out so just give me the greens and blues so I do recommend these if these are something you're interested in they are a bit pricey especially for the price per gram but I personally don't pay too much attention to price per gram just because I have so much makeup I'd never finish anything but if you are concerned about that these aren't the best value but they're easy to get again like indie brands have multi chrome so those are a little bit harder to get these are just like the Mario mixing medium these are just easier to get a hold of. And then of course, we have the Glam Palette from Natasha Denona. And you guys know this is one of my current favorite palettes. It's a cool tone palette. 
there's not a dud shadow in here and I want everybody to explore a little bit more into cool tones it's making me very happy that cool tones are coming back so more cool tone palettes are coming out you cannot go wrong with a cool tone look in my opinion it's more flattering than you think and I just love this array of shades I love the glam looks that you can get with this I mean it definitely is a color story here so you're not gonna get too many different looks because it is kind of a tonal palette but it's gorgeous and I'm so happy that she came out with a palette like this and you still do have more neutral options as opposed to all cool toned so I love this palette highly recommend it and these little guys are definitely the best value of her brand if we're talking both price per gram and just what you're getting and you guys won't regret it as long as you like this color story, this is a great find. Moving on to Huda Beauty. She, of course, came out with her Haze Obsessions palette. Full review. I already have that up. So there's one that I personally don't recommend, and that is the Sand Haze. And I really like the quality on all of these. So if there is a color story that really speaks to you, I definitely say go for it. But for me, I do find the Sand to be the least appealing to me color story-wise. I think this palette is the most similar to colors already existing in the Huda Beauty palettes to begin with. I would say maybe pass on this as far as the color stories that I like and the color stories that I feel like you might already have. I just think this one is the least unique, but at the same time, this one might be the most appealing because it also is like kind of the most wearable of the new ones, but they are all really nice, but the Sand's my least favorite color story. I will say as far as uniqueness, as far as what you might have in your collection, I think the Khaki really fulfills that and I think this one is a great fall palette. This was actually my fall recommendations video, so this is the one I recommend the most, especially because of the time of year. These colors really fit this time of year and I really like the formula on here. Now don't get me wrong, I wouldn't say, you know, these are amazing quality, but they're really good quality for the price and I just really like the curated direction that she goes with the palettes. So I really like this one. This is the one I recommend the most. And then the Purple Haze I think is also really nice. I would say quality wise, probably I struggled the most with this one and by struggle that's really an exaggeration. I didn't struggle with this palette, but it didn't catch me as super rich creamy and pigmented I guess is the way I would put it but it is a gorgeous palette and I love this color story because I love purples in general but I still recommend the khaki more but if you like purples this one is very pretty and it gives you a very nice curated purple look for you. I also noticed the two newest Viseart palettes also came to Sephora which is very exciting. I am a big supporter of Viseart. They are a wonderful small brand that create really quality shadows. So Soul this is the first one and I love these they're very very tiny and you get a real true taste of the brand in a smaller price with a smaller amount so the solstice is my favorite of the two that came out now is this palette particularly unique no but I just think it's a really nice soft curated look for you that's a little bit more on the warmer side and you're getting great quality and just a really nice easy look you don't have to think about it and then the midsummer is a little bit more romantic a little bit more mauve and pinky. So these aren't, in my opinion, the most exciting release or the most exciting palettes, but Viseart always does a good job with their stuff. And I feel like if you're investing your money into a company, Viseart is a good company to invest your money into. I wouldn't say I am strongly recommending them to you because quite frankly, they aren't the most unique things on the market right now. But if the color story does speak to you, you like the little small size, these are very good quality. But as far as what I've tried from Busy Art. I mean, like I said, I'm not jumping for joy for these. I do think they have some better palettes out there, but these are very good. They just, the color story is not something I'm super in love with. We also have a couple launches from Miss Pat McGrath. This was an older launch, but it was still on the page, which I'm excited to still talk about. This is the Mothership Rose Decadence, and this is a very nice condensed version of her rose palettes that she has out now, and everybody likes the rose color story. I think it's the most universally flattering, which is why so many brands come out with their own kind of pink toned color stories and this one is really gorgeous I will say as somebody who does have a lot of Pat McGrath palettes the quality on this just didn't seem as creamy to me as her previous palettes and that's because Pat McGrath has her standard bar set very high so I expect a lot out of the palette so this is still a great quality palette but I will say compared to other ones that I own this one doesn't quite hit that bar but it's still really great and if this color story speaks to you or if you were not able to invest in the larger mothership rose palettes this is a great way to get a taste of that is it the palette that I recommend the most from her line no 
but it's a nice palette. So now let's get into the newest baby and this is brand brand new to Sephora. I just posted my review. This is the Mothership Mega Celestial Divinity Palette. I love this palette. Now the one negative I have to say is if you're not very creative with looks, this one can be a little bit hard to figure out what to do because it is a little bit sporadic as far as where the colors are placed and there also isn't a lot of mattes in here. There's only three. So I think as far as a normal consumer that can make it difficult to come up with looks but overall I think the quality out of here is 10 out of 10. I think the value for Pat McGrath is very nice. This is about $80 but if you compare it to the other products in her line, for 18 shades, $80 is actually a decent value. And I like this style of packaging just because it's a little bit more portable. Her normal motherships are a lot heavier. You don't really want to travel with them. I don't worry about these shadows as much traveling with if they're just in this more lightweight thinner component. So I really like the style of palette. I hope she comes out with more like these. And if this is a color story that you think you are going to wear, I do highly recommend this palette. It is a little bit out there. It's a little bit deep, a little bit glam. So if you're a natural everyday eye color kind of wear, this isn't for you. I would steer you more in the way of the busy art because these are very polar opposite. But if you like a little bit glam, you like the Pat McGrath formula, I definitely give this a thumbs up. I really, really enjoyed this palette a lot. I'm very happy it came out. Hourglass of course came out with their holiday collection a few weeks ago. This is the sculpture collection. So I have the lighting edit sculpture palette and I do really enjoy this palette. I set this in my favorites where this isn't my favorite holiday palette that they've come out with. However, these are always a really great palette. These are always going to be very reliable, something to grab for very easily. I just used the bronzer today. It's a little bit more warm than the other bronzers in their line, which I I really like. So these are just palettes that I grab for and I know they're going to look good. They have everything that I need. If they were in a lineup with previous year's palettes, this would not be the one that I would pick. But if you are interested in these colors and this looks like something that you would use or you haven't picked up any Hourglass palettes in the previous years, I do think this is a nice one to start off with. It's good. Hourglass has very nice formulas. They also have the quad, which I'm putting in a giveaway, but I really do love that quad. I think I like the colors in that quad more than I like the six pan. So you actually might want to consider getting that quad if you don't already have the original palette that they came out with, because that quad is a condensed version of the holiday palette that came out two years ago. That was by far their best palette. So I do prefer the colors in that quad, but you are getting a bit more in the six pan. So that's up to you, whatever colors you prefer, but I do like those colors better. And then what released a little bit early was the Marc Jacobs collection on the Sephora website. So this is called like the Very Merry Cherry collection from Marc Jacobs. So I had to get a hold of the Cherry Riffic palette because I just love the packaging. It's very juvenile, but I like it. While the color story isn't particularly unique, I do think the quality in here is very nice. I'm not going to go out of my way to say that you would need it if you're like me and you really like the packaging because packaging is an important factor to me and you like the color story. I don't don't think you'll be disappointed. The only thing is this shade right here is a dud. So in a palette of seven, there is a dud. So that is something to be noted. This one just is lackluster, doesn't have much pigmentation, doesn't pick up much. I do like this palette. I wouldn't say it's a love. All of the colors besides the dud are very good quality and you can get very pretty looks. But for me, it definitely is about the novelty of it all. Just having this cute minty packaging with the cherry and the cherry color story. It's all just very cute. But I think if I wasn't, you know, if I didn't do YouTube, I wasn't a makeup collector. I don't think this is necessary by any means. Bite Beauty also came out with a new line of lip glosses. They are called the Yay Sayer Plumping Lip Gloss. I picked this up from Octoly a while back and I really like the formula of this lip gloss, but I really dislike the packaging. And there are so many great lip gloss formulas out there that I just don't recommend this one. I like it because it smells like a chai tea latte. It's honestly quite delightful. And the formula itself is very, very, good but the packaging I just can't get over it it's one of those twist glosses and this hard like rubber fake lipstick shape and it just it's a hot mess it's uncomfortable to apply to the lips I would just rather have a regular doe foot lip gloss so the packaging to me is just so bad that I don't want to purchase this which is a shame because the lip gloss formula is a good formula and it smells really good but it's not good enough for me to buy it anyways despite the packaging 
Okay, so we are on the final product, and I will admit, today is actually the first day that I use this product. This is an older holiday release, but it still was on the Just Arrive page, and this is the Urban Decay Stone Vibes palette, and I figured since it's been sitting in my makeup drawer, I should use it in this video, and you guys have been curious about my thoughts on this. I thought it was gorgeous. All of my friends were loving it. They were creating stunning looks. Now, keep in mind, today was my first time trying this palette, but I don't think I like it. Like, I don't like it. I did not enjoy applying this palette at all. I found that this shade right here, one of the two matte shades that I used, was very hard to blend and it had to keep getting built up and also it wouldn't blend. And I find the shimmer shades to be very, very inconsistent. When I use this raw energy shade, I got nothing from it. Maybe a little bit of sparkles, but none of this pigment at all came off of it. I used Oho right here, which is the blue shade. It's in the center of my lid. It's kind of the focal point of this look. This is a chunky monkey. Like it got all over my face. I really had to push it into my skin. I had a lot of problems building it along my lower lash line. The only shade that I liked was Vibes. Vibes seemed to give me a good time, but the rest just seems so chunky and some shades are definitely better than others. I also tried to use Bloodstone on my lower lash line. It didn't show up at all. For me, with this palette, there definitely is a certain Certain way that you need to apply this. You need to apply it with a glitter glue and wet and it's just a whole lot of work that's really unnecessary. Well, I will say the finished product, I mean it is a gorgeous finish on the eyelid once you get there but the battle is getting there and I just... This is the first Urban Decay palette that I bought in three years and I thought this one was gonna be it. This one was the one that was gonna change my mind about Urban Decay and everybody seemed to love it so I'm confused but I just, I've only used it once so maybe my mind will change but I don't think so. I don't, I don't like this palette. I don't think it's worth it. So anyways, we did it. That was the final product. I think it was like 35 or something products that I just talked about. I hope you guys enjoyed this roundup of all the new products on Sephora that I've tried I'm giving you my final thoughts. Maybe this is a good video just in time for the friends and family sale for you. So I would appreciate it if you chop through my links if you want to. You don't have to. That's okay. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would absolutely love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.